Good afternoon. My name is Jurie van Kinderen and I'm a project engineer at Practica Foundation. Practica Foundation is a non-profit consultancy organization with a mission to strengthen the skills and tools in low and middle income countries in the areas of rural water supply, irrigation, groundwater development and sanitation. And today I'll be presenting the concept of modular microgrids, a concept that integrates solar pumps as a means to an end with the aim to create sustainable water services in rural settings. It might be good to start with the notion that the rural setting is a particularly challenging environment if you want to introduce financially self-sustainable water services. Generally, there is not the advantage of economy of scale, which can be found in urban settings, and often people use multiple water sources like rivers and lakes that compete with the provided water service. And the willingness and ability to pay for water can be low. Moreover, supply chains can be long and the needed skill set to efficiently manage a water system are not always present. However, in the past years, we've seen that the dream of a self-sustaining water service can come a lot closer when you take a critical look at the hardware. And solar pumps can be a good tool to reach a goal. They do not rely on electricity grids, nor are they relying on expensive fossil fuels. However, solar pumps do not form the endpoint when it comes to finding a financially sustainable system. You have to place the concept of solar pumping in a much broader analysis. And this analysis started for us about eight years ago with the question what the root causes were for water systems to fill in rural settings. And for this, we took a technical financial perspective. And when you look at water systems in rural settings, one observation is that the systems might not always fit the need of the current population. This is due to the way systems are designed. A design horizon of often 20 years is used, meaning that the needs of a population that is expected to live there in 20 years time forms the starting point of the design. And if you use this approach for a village with a current population of 1000 people, you will need to construct a water system with a capacity of about 35,000 liters per day. This can be considered a very large system for the context it is placed in. And large systems come with large expenditures while there is a relatively small population that needs to cover those costs. This does not form a good basis for a business case. But today I'll be presenting another approach of safe water provision, a way of providing water that is based on a design founded on field measurements to ensure it fits the need. These measurements took place over multiple years in multiple countries, including Ghana, Uganda, Kenya and Liberia, and resulted in a concept that tries to use a minimal viable yet adaptable approach towards rural water provision. The concept revolves around a standardized water kiosk. The picture shows our latest design. The kiosks are sized in such a way that they can serve the water need of all expected people in its service reach. The consumption of these customers highly depends on the season. This can peak towards about 10 liters per person per day in the dry season to 2 to 3 liters per day in the wet season. This behavior can be seen in the left top graph on the slide, where the blue bars represent the monthly water consumption measured in a water kiosk in Liberia and the red line is the rainfall. These numbers can vary from country to country and from location to location, but in our projects these values seem to be more the rule than the exception, but clearly they differ by a factor two with the design standards. We have been able to take this minimal viable approach to the maximum by also measuring the consumption pattern of people over the day. It's a bit of a technical story, but in short, if the water production and the water consumption is pretty much similar, you do not have to store a lot of water. And when you look at the lower left graph on the slide, you can see how much water is taken in which hour of the day at that same water kiosk in Liberia. And that bell curve is pretty much similar to the production pattern of a solar pump. Meaning we came to the conclusion that the needed water storage of a kiosk can be minimized, resulting in much cheaper water kiosks. These standardized kiosks can be placed in a network that is fed by a single well fitted with a solar pump. The neat thing about this technical approach is that it's possible to add or remove, remove kiosks in this network, meaning you can use an adaptable approach for the implementation. You make a first estimate of the expected water need, implement a first minimal viable system, and then you measure your result. And then you can adjust your service if needed, thereby serving the current water need at a minimal cost while still being able to deal with future changes in demand. This is a very different approach than the static conventional approach where the layout of the system is determined in the initial design. The picture on the slide shows the layout of a system in a pilot with Project Magi in Ghana, where we use this approach to serve the water needs of a population of a thousand people. During this pilot, we compared this approach to an approach where one single large water kiosk would have been implemented to serve the population. 
The pilot is running for a year and the results are promising. When you compare this modeler approach containing three water kiosks with an approach where one single large water kiosk would have been implemented in the village, the pilot showed that the investment per kiosk in a network setting is about 50% cheaper, while the water sales of a network as a whole increases by 145% compared to a single water kiosk, creating a significant competitive financial advantage which even increases when the network increases. Although it's not part of the research done, it might be worth mentioning that this village has exactly the same size of the calculation example in the beginning of the presentation. With a conventional design approach, the village would have been likely to serve with a system with an overhead tank of about 35,000 liters. We just used 3,000 liters of storage to serve the same population. The question whether the system is financially sustainable highly depends on the man management structure. With a yearly turnover of about $1,400, it's definitely not a business case in the Western definition where one can get a return on investment. It, it, however, can cover the cost of a local caretaker and the needed maintenance. And upscaling to multiple systems in the area will create a certain scale of economy that allows a professional management structure in a private sector approach. For this private sector approach, we also recognize the importance of prepaid technology on public water points to prevent free riding. In previous projects, we used electronic prepaid technology, which proved to be very expensive, not only as an investment, but also during the operational phase. Caretakers in rural settings were not able to maintain these systems. Supply chains of expensive parts are long and form a frustrating bottleneck when the system faces downtime. In recent projects, we've been therefore experimenting with a newly developed mechanical prepaid system, which we call the token tap. The advantage of a mechanical prepaid meter is that the complexity of electronic prepaid meters is avoided and therefore easier and cheaper to maintain. Yet sales tracking is still possible and free riding is avoided, making it a support tool that can help in the quest towards a financial sustainable water system in rural settings. Concluding that the search of a viable business case for rural water supply is challenging, but moving to a direction where we learn more and more and are able to integrate these lessons in new designs and concepts, closing the gap between the dream of a viable business case and reality. We think that it's worth to rethink design approaches with a clear goal in mind. Use a design thinking in which operational expenditure per capita is leading to ensure implemented water systems become financially sustainable. In the end, by implementing water systems, you introduce a service in the village, and if we ensure that the service can be paid for by its customers, we'll be heading in the right direction. Solar pumps can be a very good fit in this approach. We also advise to monitor water systems during the operational phase in detail, knowing the customer, beha customer behavior and see if the hardware matches the need of these customers forms invaluable data for next wash projects. It might be worth mentioning that Practica Foundation is also working on monitoring tools in the form of digital asset management tools. Please visit our website for more information on this. On the same website, you will be able to find more information on modular building as well as the token tab.